and welcome to the RPG channel. Today I'm going to talk to you for a bit about tactical combat. Now, so, first off, let me tell you what I mean when I say tactical combat. There are a couple of different schools of thought about how combat in a role-playing environment should be handled. And one of those is tactical combat. And this is when you have a combat encounter where the movement and location of each combatant is tracked and maintained on a map of some sort displaying what the environment is like. And a lot of people think this means miniatures, but while miniatures are definitely helpful in a lot of situations, they aren't really all that necessary. And for my own games, I don't even use them, but that's an entirely different video altogether. Um, instead, I just use graph paper with, I draw the map before the adventure in ink, and then during the actual game, we use pencils and mark where our units are and what battlefield effects have taken place which have changed the terrain. And that works just fine, so you don't necessarily need to invest in miniatures and battle maps and things like that. But that is an option if that's what you're interested in. It's just not necessary, so don't let that be a detriment to keeping you from trying this type of scenario out in play. Okay, so there are a couple of different ways you can run combat. This is only one of them. So, so you start the combat encounter, and in a lot of older adventures that I've seen, you ran into situations like this. That's not a very interesting combat encounter because, for one, you're having the heroes walk into a featureless room and confront two rather insignificant enemies. This isn't interesting from a combat perspective, and it's not challenging because there's really no chance that the heroes are going to be significantly hurt or even delayed by this encounter. So, what you want to try to do instead is figure out some way to have this encounter actually be challenging to the players. Okay, that's a little bit better, but you're still running into a lot of the same problems because now you probably do have a more challenging encounter at least. It's still not going to be very interesting because the players are basically going to be just grinding against the same exact enemy. So why not try to mix it up a little bit? That's better. So now instead of just having multiple copies of the exact same enemy, you have a group of weaker enemies being led by a stronger enemy. And what this is going to do is it's going to change the dynamic of the fight because you'll have some players having to contend with the weaker enemies while other players are going to try to push through and deal with the stronger enemy, which is ideally going to take up more damage than the weaker enemies could and also be able to deal more damage to the players. So, simply by including this into the encounter, you've actually changed things quite a bit because now the players have a lot more to think about simply because the area around the main enemy is going to be significantly more dangerous than the area surrounding the weaker enemies. So, now that that's taken care of, why don't we try to make the actual environment a little bit more interesting instead of just being a featureless square room. Okay, that's much better. So now we have a asymmetrical battleground for the players to occupy during this fight. And in addition to that, you also have stuff in the room with the players. So there's going to be natural choke points and areas where position become a lot more important than they would in just a empty square room with nothing going on. Also, notice the door that we've included up there. That's 
sort of cool to include in fights because it makes the players think about what could happen next. So you're going to include an element of exploration in the fight itself because already you're showing the players where they can go after the fight's over. Now we have an interesting group of enemies and a interesting environment for them to fight in. Okay, so now let's talk about the actual pacing of the fight. I like to run what in my head I think of as dynamic fights. And what I mean by that is the fight is going to change over the course of the encounter so that you don't have the players falling into a rhythm where it's just like I attack, I do this much damage, or I miss, I get hit by the enemy for this much damage. And what you want to do is pace the encounter so that about the time that rhythm gets established, something happens and throws it off. Now, you can think whatever you like about Dungeons and Dragons 4th Edition, and it's clearly not for everyone, but there's a lot of good things from that game that you can use in encounters like this. So, let's talk about the Orc Leader first. Anytime you have a significant enemy that you want to challenge the players, you need to make it an interesting opponent for them to confront. And one way to go about doing this is have them hold back their more powerful attacks or give them some type of special tactic or technique or something that they're going to use later in the fight. So with our Orc Leader there, let's say whenever he gets knocked down to half-life or something like that maybe he starts attacking twice per round or his attacks start doing more damage or knocking the players back or something like that it doesn't have to be much and depending on what system you can what system you're using you can justify this different ways like maybe he started using a magic item or maybe he's started doing some type of special technique or something like that. It doesn't really matter how you explain it, but just have something happen at about midway through that creature's life toward the end that changes things and causes the players to reevaluate how the fight's going. Also, the two other orcs we have in the front there, ideally they're going to die first. Um, that's at least how it works in theory. Typically the players, in my experience, tend to run past enemies like that and go straight toward the stronger ones. Mostly because they know you don't want them to do this. So the orcs die and then let's have something else happens. Like, I don't know, maybe bring in a new enemy. Okay, so now we have an ogre waiting behind the door. The ogre's going to come out into the main encounter area once the first two orcs die. The orc leader is going to start using stronger attacks once he's brought down to um, less than half-life. What that's going to do is it's going to cause the player to reevaluate how the fight's going and whether or not they want to keep doing what they're doing or go deal with the ogre now. And while that's just one encounter, there's a bunch of different things you can do to make fights a lot more exciting and a lot more interesting than just grinding against weak and useless enemies. And my opinion is that unless the fight's important somehow, then you probably shouldn't have it. And if it is important, then go ahead and make it interesting. I'm sorry for the light in here. The sun just decided to die today. I don't know when that's going to be coming back. And also, uh, I have a Twitter account now. Link's in the sidebar. And I will talk to you later. Thanks for watching the RPG channel. Oh, God.